questions or any comments you might have. We are on Twitter. Just use hashtag MKTDAY. Or if you'd like, you can even follow me at Dagger Nixon or email us at yourmoney at skynews.com.au. And we will try to answer any questions that you have for us. Let's get today's show underway. Michael McCarthy, what did you make of the... Actually, let's go to Julia Lee. I know she's excited to, uh, to get off the mark. Julia, I might go to you first. What do you make of the session? Well, the market was up by 0.6%. We saw a pretty slow start, but as you can see from the intraday graph behind me, it was all about the end of the session where we saw a sharp uh, jump up. And I guess the key here were the banks. The banks were in negative territory in the morning, but going into the close, we saw a strong gain from the big four banks. Gold miners also doing well after gold prices improved overnight. And Telstra bouncing back strongly after being sold down after the ACCC's comments yesterday. One stock that didn't do too well, though, is Perpetual. It did trade X, um, I guess, access to buyback, and that was down by 7.3%. But a lot of traders and investors will be happy to close the books on August. It was the last day of the month. And for the month, we've actually seen the Australian market down by 2.9%. If we have a look at the month, a huge range, and this is the last 30 days on the Australian market, you can see that most of the volatility came at the front of the month, so the first week, where we did see a range in August between 3,765 and on the top end we saw it above 4,500 points so extreme volatility before the month we did see those growth areas trading down energy was the worst sector losing more than six percent we saw the material sector as well as the industrial sector losing more than four percent and instead the defensive areas were the clear winners the utility sector the telecom sector uh, ending in the black there but altogether I guess the market cautious ahead of some big numbers in the US this week the non-farm payrolls and Obama speech next week uh, so so altogether, a pretty good end for the Australian market, given the tepid start. You know, I'm pretty relieved that August is over. Uh, I suppose the lessening, if you like, that we've seen in, in volatility and the hope, at least, of further confidence from the market. Is it all predicated on a lack of, you know, bad or, you know, bad news coming out of Europe and, Euro uh, Europe and the US? Because it seems any sort of negativity out of there and we can start seeing those wild swings again. James, it does feel like the calm before the storm and you can see that in the volumes of the market, especially the US market, where the market has pretty much gone dead this week compared to the volumes that we saw in the first week of August. So really the volume drop off quite significant, stock correlations at record highs. So for those stock pickers out there, it's very hard to beat the market because we've seen the risk on risk off trade back in August. But altogether, September is going to be a key month, the end of September. And that's because September 20s, the FOMC meeting Meeting. It has been extended to a two-day meeting where the Federal Reserve will look at the tools available to it. And we did see the Federal Reserve's minutes out for its meeting on the 9th of August. And it does look like there was a discussion of perhaps more asset buying or trying to get those long-term interest rates down by, uh, uh, by manipulating the short-term and long-term maturities and buying and selling those. So altogether, it does look like the market is living on hope at the moment. And it is running on hope that we will see more easing in the U.S. Not only is that September 2021 meeting important in the US but directly following that on the 23rd is of course the European Financial Stability Fund and the meeting to try and expand that for the bailout of Greece so Mark is going to be very closely watching that we know there has been a lot of controversy Finland wants collateral Greece has offered its uh, equity in bank shares which I don't know how much that's going to be worth so a lot of tension there so the same problems that we saw in August still around in September we see a number of very key meetings and I guess the market's going to be watching that very keenly right now. It really does feel like the calm before the storm, very low volumes. Julie, in terms of hopes, as you say, markets living on the hopes of further stimulus from the Fed, do you think it's a better than even chance we will see, see some sort of stimulus? Hearing some comments, speaking to some, you know, much respected market participants, economists in particular, suggesting that those comments uh, from uh, Fed Chair Ben Bernanke wasn't just leaving the door open, rather setting, I suppose, the, the, the making the setting, if you like, uh, for for further quantitative easing. General, I guess if you have a look at major investment banks and their outlook in terms of easing, most do expect easing. If we have a look at JP Morgan, I think they've put a 50% expectation that we are going to see more easing at that meeting. And if we have a look at Goldman Sachs, that they're saying that we're going to see more easing in the US by the beginning of 2012. Of course, a lot of the market thinks that we didn't hear of quantitative easing or more easing uh, with other tools available to the Fed in the Jackson Hole meeting because really the Fed wants to see that more data come 
coming out. We saw the GDP numbers coming out at 1%. And if we have a look at that quarterly, uh, if we have a look at that annual figure, when you see four quarters of growth uh, below that 2% mark, it's always led to a recession in the US. So altogether, I guess all eyes on a possible recession in the US. And the key really here is going to be that jobs number out on Friday. And that's why it's so important for markets. So I think the Federal Reserve looking at some of the numbers coming out before that September 20 meeting, the market putting around about a 50% expectation of more easing in the U.S., but a lot of it is going to be dependent on the numbers that come out.